talking about a very serious subject, so let me see if I can get through this with you. Um, you have a personality type that you believe in, and um, it's this type of a person that likes to control the conversation, that the only way that it becomes, um, the, only, the only thing which satisfies this person is to be the most important person in the conversation. Um, and, um, and it will tell you, this person will tell you that you are not having a normal conversation with a homeless person, that there's something wrong with that conversation. There's something wrong with communication that you're, you know what I mean? To interrupt or violate that conversation that you're having with a homeless person. Um, and, um, so I guess what I'm talking about is, um, is that homeless people do not go back inside when something's wrong. They just continue to walk around in circles, okay? And this is what we could be talking about. Maybe this is one of these things that's not really as exciting as it sounds, for instance, you know? That um, if I was really going to go up against one of these guys with, with one of these knives, um, it's happening in the experience of my life not in the experience of yours and um so what i would do is i would leave him on the sidewalk somehow you just got to leave him on the sidewalk unconscious and it's very dangerous when these guys run around with their knives their pocket knives and they're probably lucky lucky to be alive when it comes to the homeless people because the homeless people are just being given way too much responsibility you know and um and so this mentality keeps running out into the street like with a pocket knife and it keeps illustrating this um the, it keeps illustrating the justice system in a in a mock story, you know, about the homeless person going to jail. Because the homeless person is more vulnerable to the justice system, you know what I mean? But that's not what we need to be talking about when we're talking about homeless people, because they just keep talking. They're never finished talking because they're talking about themselves doing something ethically wrong, having done something morally wrong, made a mistake, or they're talking about people who mis make mistakes where, where they come from. And so if you want to know the truth, the truth is, is that, um, is that the homeless people deserve even more credit for their self-control because they're being violated by the street crime mentality even more than anybody else is. You know, they're being abused by those mentalities even more than you are because we don't remember what you're talking about by the time we get to that conversation because it's not in our immediate conversation um, I'm not going to go back inside I'm not going to run back inside like when this guy shows up at the park like with his buck knife you know I'm not going to run back inside or think to myself what am I doing out here or anything like that it's just that when it comes to that confrontation it's almost as if to say that the homeless person does know who they are in that confrontation and they do see how vulnerable they are and you need to stop exploiting that weakness. You know what I mean? Just because I am just as afraid, I'm just as afraid of this as anybody else is. Stop exploiting me. Stop using me for exploitation when it comes to this thing about whatever that is, you know, stop using me for exploitation. Stop listening to people that are trying to take over the conversation or talk about people who try to communicate or wish they could communicate or that you wish you had, you wish that you were more comprehensive, you know, um, 
you know what I mean? Isn't that a dirty trick to play, you know? That we could be just this close to getting a homeless person off the streets and you wish that you were more comprehensive, you know? What do you mean you wish that you were more comprehensive? Like, because I'm speaking French? Because I'm speaking Italian? Why would you need to be more comprehensive to comprehend what I'm saying when you hear me on the internet? Why would you need to be more comprehensive to comprehend the homeless person? When you're having a conversation with a homeless person, all of a sudden you just remind yourself that you could possibly be like a thousand times more comprehensive than you are, right? And it's, it's, just, it's, it's just very sad. It's just very, very sad. You know, um, you're, ex you're using homeless people for exploitation because their vulnerabilities to, um, to, to, um, their, their vulnerabilities are, are different, you know, and, um, and, and, and so it's just, it's, it's kind of interesting, but that person cannot really just cannot lead the conversation. That person cannot lead the conversation because they're talking about a homeless person's missing cell phone, you know? They're talking about missing property from the homeless person. I'm missing like two cell phones, a backpack, a bicycle, a laptop computer um, since I've been back in Los Angeles. Up in Santa Cruz, I was missing like uh, my identification, um, my my jacket. Um, you, you see what I mean? It's just I'm I'm one homeless person, and I'm missing so much property that it's, you just have to understand that I'm not experiencing the same mystery anymore. It's not just like I'm in a mystery about myself. I, I it's not that hard for me to understand. You know what I mean? What's going on? And, um, and, and so it's not the exploitation of the homeless person. Um, you know, look how we all become so, uh, sensitive, you know, when it comes to justice, you know, that we all become so sensitive to that subject. Um, when the homeless person is around, you know what I mean? Um, you, you cannot lead the conversation without having a normal approach, you know, like um, this person took the wrong approach to the homeless person at some point and um, and they're the most important person when you talk about the right approach and that needs to stop.